Hey everyone, in this tutorial I'm just going to go through the differences between these three elements, the pop-up, the floating group, and the group focus to point out some important differences so that you understand which one you need to use uh, when you're working with your application because they all offer a few different things. So let's start with the pop-up. The pop-up is a full screen overlay. Uh, so if I grab a pop-up element here and add it to the page, you can immediately see that the background is taking up my entire screen. And that's how it'll look like when you preview the page here too. Now you can actually adjust how that background looks. So if I remove the preset style that's added to the pop-up, you have control over the color of the background, so I can actually change that. You can also change the transparency, so if I don't even want to see a background at all, I can pull down the transparency down to zero, and there's no background. You can see the um, whatever's on your page more clearly there. Um, if you do want to have a little bit of a distinction between what's on your page and the content of the pop-up, which is this square here, you can um, uh, you know, increase the color, increase the transparency there, but you can also blur it out a little bit, um, which uh, you know, helps you keep that distinction between the background and the foreground. So if I set this to two, you can see my text back there uh, gets a little bit blurry. And now the user's attention is uh, uh, here. And this pop-up is great for many things. Um, one of the most common things is uh, alert messages, confirmation dialogues, anything where you need the user to pay attention to whatever is happening here before they can move on to something else. So if they're deleting something important, you can use a pop-up to show, hey, are you sure you want to delete this as a secondary confirmation step and have you know buttons and other text and things happening inside of this uh, container here. The pop-up has to be shown through a workflow. So pop-ups don't show automatically, they're invisible by default. So when you add a pop-up, uh, you'll want something to trigger it uh, to display. So for example, a button like this, you would start edit a workflow and use the element action show to show your pop-up. And that way when you click on the button, it'll uh, pull it up on the page. And we'll preview it here real quick so you can see, show pop-up and there it is. Okay, uh, you can hide a pop-up a few different ways. You can do a button inside of the uh, content area here to hide the element, so the opposite of show, or you can click anywhere outside of this main content area. So anywhere in this background space, I can click and it'll close automatically. If you wanna prevent users from doing that, from clicking anywhere to close, um, you, there is an option here to, to uh, not allow the pop-up to be closed. It, you, so you can press the escape button on your keyboard to also close it, but that's the same as clicking out anywhere. When you check this, clicking outside will also be prevented um, alongside uh, preventing any keyboard uh, keys from closing the pop-up. One quick thing to note about um, designing a pop-up is when you have the element open here in your editor, you'll see that the element is uh, placed at the very top of your screen, but that doesn't necessarily mean that the user is going to be scrolled up to the top when they see a pop-up. Um, it's just where you're designing the, the element. So for example, if I were to move the button way down at the bottom of the page, and let me actually turn this off. Um, and I were to open the pop-up while I'm at the bottom of the page, the pop-up will still uh, show here in the same place. You can see that I'm not being scrolled back up like it might seem because when you're editing a pop-up, it's up here, uh, but it actually will show wherever you are on the page when you trigger it. Okay, let's talk about um, the let's talk about the floating group next. So the floating group is a sticky type of group. It sticks to the page so that when you scroll the page, you will still see the floating group. A very good use case um, example here for this is your page header. So I'm going to add a floating group to the top of my page here. This is very popular um, with websites and apps in general. I'm going to give it a background so that we can see it a little bit better. Okay, um, and let's just say that this is, you know, our header with buttons and maybe a logo, things like that. We'll give it some styling so that we can see that. All right, so we want to be able to see this header at all times at the top of the page, no matter how far down we are have scrolled the page. So what you want to do is. Uh, number one, place it. If you want it to be floating at the top of the page, place it at the very top of the page. That top 
uh, boundary of the floater um, floating group element needs to meet the top boundary of your page and you want to set the float relative to the top. Um, if this is a full width um, element then you don't really need to worry about horizontally how it's floating but if you know you have a specific width to it and you want it to be stuck more to the right or more to the left then you can choose left or right there. Um, you have a floating Z index, so most times you're going to want these things to float on top of everything else, but you do have the option to have them float beneath um, other elements on the page. So playing around with these settings will let you see how the behavior um, changes. Uh, you can also float things to the bottom of your page. You can have it um, float in relationship to both. So you could have it in the middle of the page, for example, and it would still stick there. Um, as you scroll, it'll just kind of float in space. Or you can have it float to nothing. The benefit of having a floating group that is not actually floating relative to anything is that it's an independent um, element that sits on top um, or below everything without affecting um, changing widths on the screen and responsive design doesn't really affect it because um, the elements around it aren't actually on the same plane as it. It's kind of its own thing. You can sort of think of it like a pop-up in that way um, in that it's completely independent. It's not something you'll use too often, but there are cases I've seen where to make the responsiveness um, work uh, well with overlapping elements, you sometimes want to put stuff in a floating group where it's relative to nothing because you don't want responsiveness changing things up. So I'm going to refresh the page here so that we can see what the floating behavior looks like. And you can see as I scroll up and down, my header content is stuck at the top there. So that's what the floating group does. Now let's talk about the group focus. Group focus, uh, one of the best use cases for that is um, tooltips. So the group focus is also something that by default is not going to be visible. You have to show it in a workflow. So I'm going to add a group focus to my page and you'll see what happens immediately. The first thing that happens is it immediately jumps to the top left corner um, upper left corner of your screen. That's because it needs a reference element. This requires um, another element to be attached to it. So um, if you think of a tooltip, usually you'll click like a little eye icon or a little help icon. That would be the reference element to the group focus. So let's say that our button here to show group focus is our um, reference element. And once I choose that, you can see that it snapped over to the reference element. And if you need to give it a little bit more spacing or adjust its positioning a little bit, you can offset these things uh, by adjusting these values here. So if I do offset by 10 pixels, it's going to move it down 10 pixels or left by 100 pixels. Um, it's going to offset the left side of it by 100 uh, pixels like that. So. Um, and you can still, you know, change the sizing if you want. This can be uh, whatever sizing you decide there. And inside of the group, you can add whatever information you want. So if this is a tooltip, you can add a text and say, this is some um, extra info about a feature, right? And again, in order to show this group, you want to do it through a workflow. This isn't going to be visible by default. So when we show group focus, I will use the element action to show uh, group focus and I'm going to preview the page so that you can see how this works. Um, the group focus element can be hidden with the hide action as well. Um, so if I click, you can see it's hidden or shown there, but you can also hide the group focus by clicking anywhere outside similar to a pop-up and that's not something that you can lock off and prevent that will always happen if you click outside of the group focus it will hide it um, if it's visible of course um, but showing it you do need to do that with a workflow um, you can hide the group focus like i said through a workflow as well too you know if you have a button inside of the group focus uh, that's set to hide you can do that as well Right now, those are the differences between those three elements. Hopefully that makes it a little bit more clear to you um, about which is going to be appropriate to use depending on the feature that you're building. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and make sure you subscribe to the channel to get updated anytime there is a new tutorial. Thanks so much for watching.